the, the pressures, and if everything is okay, ignition of the two solid rocket boosters and lift off. All right, have you got that? Minus six seconds. Watch the arms pull back. Watch the main engine light up. Count to seven because things are being checked out. And then if everything is right, the booster is light, and off we go. So enjoy the liftoff, everybody. We'll be back after Arian has cleared the tower. Attention for the final Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, unité top. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage EAP. Décollage. Beautiful. Coming roaring off the pad, Ariane 5 into the night sky, being followed by the naked eye. We'll probably be able to see booster separation. We might even be able to see farther than that. 780, that's 780 tons at liftoff, which the DDO is calling out everything is normal on board. Did you count to seven, by the way, everybody? Hope you did. The 780 tons are rapidly going to be shed by Ariane because she's burning right now at liftoff five tons per second. That's two and a half tons per second for each one of the boosters. Uh, this is a fuel, of course, plus another 300. Well, Jonathan, Nelly, what a great launch that was. It's pretty stage. specky, isn't it? Fast, Nighttime launches fast, are really fast, good fast, things, fast, things fast, to see. I mean, you can't actually see a lot, but it, it's just be brilliant to be there to watch it. And uh, in about, oh, um, another 40 seconds or so, the two solid rocket boosters will fall off the side and the first stage will continue to burn. You saw how fast it left the launch pad, much, much faster than the space shuttle. The space shuttle is almost three times heavy, heavier than this one. But also, with the people on board, you don't want to pull too many Gs on a shuttle. But with a rocket like this, you can just pull whatever Gs you like. Yeah. yeah, explain to us, Jonathan, the figures that we've got here that are changing yeah, on the left-hand side. You see the one down the bottom there? That's the altitude, 50 km, 51 kilometres altitude already. Uh, at the time that these solid rocket boosters fall off in about 15 seconds, it'll be about 68 kilometers altitude and it's already going almost 2,000 kilometers per hour and by the time the Opta satellite is released from the uh, top stage of the here, here we go there's the boosters falling off see that there it is yep we hope that's the boosters over the boosters coming off the side yeah they've done their job they've burned out now here yeah, they're just falling off there yes by the time the Opta satellite separates 34 minutes after launch uh, the um, spacecraft will be doing about 34,000 kilometres per hour. There you go. There's a, what a shot. Isn't that amazing? That's yeah. fantastic. So uh, it only takes 34 minutes for them to get up to the point where these satellites are popped out, as you say. That's right. Yeah, the Japanese one comes out some minutes earlier than that because it's sitting on top. Once it's clear and it's safe, the uh, um, Optus one will come out after it. And then it has its own booster rocket, which will uh, send it into um, its final orbit. And over the next few weeks or so, the orbit will change from uh, an egg-shaped elliptical type of orbit mm. to a perfectly circular one. And the satellite will then be sitting above basically the same one point over the uh, or near the equator. 156 degrees east, which is out over the ocean, and that gives them gives us the perfect um, location to broadcast its signal both Australia to both Australia and New Zealand, which is what this satellite is dedicated to do. But of course, Jonathan, there would be a settling in period before they can just flick the switch. That's right. Yes, they'll have to test everything, make sure it's right. Um, one of the things they have to make sure happens, of course, is that there goes the that's called the fairing, the nose cone mm. at the top of the rocket. Once it's up high enough, there's not much air left anymore. You don't need the um, the protective nose cone is just extra weight you don't want to carry so they get rid of that and the satellites sort of sit exposed out the top. Um, so yes, uh, as you say, the, uh, there's going to be a, a, a settling in testing period which will be a matter of weeks, I'm, I'm guessing maybe a month or so before this gets going and one of the most crit critical points is after the satellite is released from the rocket they've got to get the solar panels open to start getting the power because it's running on batteries at the moment and these solar panels will uh, spread out to oh, almost 25 metres wide. Wow. Very, very large. Tell me what happens to the rocket 
Does it become space junk? Does it come back to Earth? The, the booster rockets fall down into the ocean, into the Atlantic Ocean, because this is launched from South America, going yes. over towards Africa. The booster rockets fall down and they, uh, they sink in, down to the bottom of the ocean. And uh, the, the main boost, the main launch part of it, that also falls down into the ocean and um, is... Um, is junk if you like. Yeah. <laughs> that's we what have, happens to a lot of these rockets. Yeah. We're Actually, that, that, over the ocean. That, that fairing that you saw come off there, that nose cone, uh, one of those washed up on a beach uh, in Florida, <laughs> I think it was, <laughs> or somewhere in South America or America, yeah. yeah. And someone's got a bit of uh, very expensive space junk there. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, thanks very much for talking us through that launch. It was uh, spectacular. It was great. Great. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so Thank much. You. Good on you.